Hello, I'm Martin from Wisely Automotive. I used to live in Scotland for quite a while and just before leaving I thought it would be appropriate to stop by the Stirling Park and Ride because I heard it's one of the biggest charging hubs in the country. We very often hear how mass adoption of EVs will become impossible because people simply cannot quite picture how cities and residential areas will change to accommodate for the transition from petrol. Let me quickly show you some footage just to illustrate what's possible. Now this is what you see when you enter the Stirling Castleview Park and Ride. If you are an EV driver it is exactly what you want to see. 32 brand new charging points in total powered in part by the solar canopies covering 132 parking spaces. What you need to know for context is that this used to be the old setup. Just like usual, a lonely single 50 kW rapid and two spots for AC charging at the very far end of the car park. If you find all of this DC, AC, kilowatt, mumbo jumbo too confusing, don't worry, subscribe because we will have plenty of videos covering the basics of EV charging as well in the future. Moving on, let's take this one by one. The solar panels. They stretch over almost 1400 square meters and are estimated to generate 250,000 kilowatt hours of energy annually. That's equivalent to covering more than a million miles in the i3. Really not bad considering the Scottish weather. On the back end there seems to be a Tesla power pack installed to help with power balancing and the solar energy storage. I do not know who exactly was planning the whole setup, but refreshingly one can actually say it makes sense. With this being a park and ride, the highest priority is to provide cheap, slow charging for commuters leaving their cars in the car park for half a day. Those drivers are served by the 20 I repeat, 20 slow 7 kW AC units. Each one has two connectors, so 40 cars can charge at 7 kW. There's also room for expansion on the right side of the solar installation. As a side note, it's actually very neatly organized by the power output, with each row being clearly labeled. Again, something so simple, yet all EV drivers always appreciate good signage. Next up, with the park and ride being so close to the Stirling Castle, it does get quite a bit of tourist traffic in the summer season. Hence, there are nine dual 22 kW units, which can recharge a good chunk of range even on the larger cars if you stay for a couple of hours. Lastly, the rapid chargers. The old one seems to be staying for now, and three additional ones have been installed under the canopies. The reason for installing so many rapids into a park and ride is that Stirling is located right along the A9, which is a major road going up to Inverness in the Highlands. With that said, a few drivers I chatted to felt disappointed that despite this being such a new installation, all the units are only 50 kilowatts. I do have to agree. In the age of e-trons, Model 3s, ID4s, 50 kilowatts doesn't quite cut it. To complete the whole picture, given this is a park and ride, there are e-bikes and bus services available to continue your journey as well. And that's about it. This is the future of the EV charging infrastructure. Expect to see a lot more sites coming online in the next couple of years to get ready for the ban of IC cars. It simply needs to happen and is one of the ways people will be able to fully enjoy electric cars even if they happen to live in a flat without a driveway and have no dedicated parking space for charging at home.